Hey Internet, my name is Mark. Uh, in the middle of April of last year, I got laid off from my job. And last week I got my first verbal offer, and this week on Monday, I got my second verbal offer. So now I'm between these two jobs and I haven't decided yet. But I wanted to talk about what I did to get here. As we know, the job market is um, universally garbage right now. And I think the computer science software engineering job market is especially tumultuous. In my opinion, it's a combination of all these layoffs that started happening about two years ago, and also this oversaturation of software engineers. And I think in a way, it's kind of like this bubble that started popping. My journey in unemployment was kind of like this, you know, wake up call in terms of like, okay, this isn't the same environment I was in two years ago. I'm not that experienced of a software engineer, so I'm kind of at this disadvantage. I took it in my own hands and leveled up, and it took a lot of failed interviews to get there. I'm gonna follow up with another video going over my stats, but I wanted to talk about kind of what I have done uh, you know, from getting laid off, some of the things I've learned, whether that be objective or subjective, and just kind of sharing what my day-to-day -day was, because I think I've learned a lot in the last six months, and I've genuinely leveled up. The two offers I have are for mid-level positions, and I believe that I am firmly a mid-level engineer, and I am a better mid-level engineer than I was six and a half months ago. In other words, Getting laid off brought me to this level of the lowest stage of my competence level, where I was previously at the highest stage of my competence level. But now I've kind of raised that a little bit through my own work and through my own study. No green screen shirt, just me, open door in the trash. So the first thing I want to go over is my resume. This is Mark's site, my portfolio website, and I see it as an extension of my resume. I think this is really important. I don't know if anyone's taken a look at it uh, resume wise. So I was coming from a super back end position in the ad tech company. I was still a back end engineer. And so I wanted to make sure that I wasn't truly pigeonholed in there. I really enjoy back end work. And one of my decisions is full stack right now. One of my decisions is back end. And one of those decisions I have to make is kind of like, which one do I want to go into given where I am in my, my career? I don't know if I believe in the whole notion of a career path, but it is something important to consider. Here's my resume from 2020. It's probably the same as 2019, but not much on there. Here's my resume from 2022. This is V1-5. So this is what I got my last job with. I don't mind sharing any of this pretty much. Consulting job was something I started and left very quickly. The consulting was not my thing. So I went to software engineering. I took this and initially I kind of just stitched on my last position to it. That is to say software engineer uh, chart boost. This was okay, but I really quickly was like, okay, I, I need something new. It was trying to get feedback from people. And that's my first tip for you is right away, update your resume and right away, get feedback from people. If you have jobs you want to apply to, save them. One of the reasons is because you wanna make sure you apply with the best resume. I cannot give you the perfect resume tips. I cannot tell you how to structure your resume, but what I can tell you is that it matters to get input from anyone and everyone. And eventually you'll find something that you like. What I ended up doing is I have two resumes. I have one that's full stack and that's effectively, you know, the same experience, but heavily emphasizing uh, my software engineer position at Chartboost Consulting and of course the Minecraft server. That's never gonna leave my resume. I love it. It's come up in several conversations as well. Of course, education, some skills and projects. This is how I prefer to outline it. This is how I've come to prefer to outline it. And it's worked. It's gotten into, I guess, Fang and some really good startups. And then here's my back end. It looks exactly the same, but the information is ultimately different. And it's funny because my two offers have used these two resumes. For the resume stuff, I would recommend Auto. I think they just changed their name. Welcome to the jungle. This and jobright.ai. I recommend these because they're really good at leveling. Way better than LinkedIn or Indeed. I've had so much more success and ease in terms of just getting to a company's website and then going to send my resume through that website very quickly. This let me go very fast and it gave me jobs I was applicable for. LinkedIn was such a bad filter and no one used Indeed to post their job. I had, you know, this resume done and I, I hit up some friends for referrals from cool companies and whatever. And I started off applying by maybe to 20, 30 jobs and I got a couple interviews started. One that's notable was at a, a bigger startup. It was a really cool company. And I think one one of the things I learned is that I, I sold myself really well, which was great. When it came to the system design at the end and the programming at the end, I think the lead code grind is important. And I'm gonna talk more about what I did for algorithms later, but you can't get too caught up in it. During the coding interview, I was thinking of all these abstract solutions and, and graphs and whatever. The solution was simple and I didn't get it for like an hour. And you know, I really bombed that interview. And then there was system design where I think I did okay. At the time I was like, yeah, that was great. But I did it at a junior level. And I that showed me I need to level up my system design very explicitly. And I'm also going to get into what I use for that. But effectively, this interview was a failure. Previously, I have done really well in behaviorals and the initial coding screens in person. My, my biggest weakness is online assessments. And so I've done well when, the, when those don't exist. The time pressure and everything, I have my own opinion. But to get past those, you got to, you know, study algorithmically code. 
And it's definitely helped me and I definitely started doing that, but I had to change my perspective. That big startup was a failure and I was really bummed because it was really cool. And so I realized that I needed more practice. Interviewing itself is a skill. People say that all the time. And with software engineering, you're stuck in this eternal loophole where you have to do a phone screen, a behavioral, and then a coding screen initially. And oftentimes you have to do a final panel, which is gonna be another behavioral, maybe another system design, which is gonna be another coding. That's like the generic one I've run into, except for Cloudflare, but we'll get there. And so what I realized for me in my way of studying is I needed more mock interviews. The behavioral is my strength. <laughs> for better or for worse, I have confidence uh, in, in who I am and, and I guess what I like to do. Well, this is where I'll introduce you to one of the first websites that I was using. Triax when it did reach out to me and offered me like a little discount code. So if you're curious about this and want to check it out, I have a link in the description for half off. The key thing with Exponent for me was the mock interview style. I had found their videos on YouTube, which is why I said yes when they emailed me. And I think what was really helpful is if we go to system design, big overviews for things were really helpful. And I think it, this is a single source of truth of information. For the mock interviews, these were helpful because you have an interview on the left and someone doing it on the right. And the interview asks the questions and you get a chance to go out on your own and solve that question and then come back and confer with how they do it in the video. And then just getting a feel for how people answer the question. I have another resource on system design interviews that I really liked as well. It stems from this idea that I need more mock interviews. I can't just go out and hire people for a mock interview. I don't want to spend too $200 per interview could prepare myself more so before I do that. So you have these more mock interviews and you go in and apply some more. Maybe you change your resume a little bit like I did over and you get into more companies and more interviews. One thing I started doing was looking at startups on AngelList. There's now Wellfound used to be AngelList. And I interviewed with three different startups. One, I didn't pass the coding assessment. I think they were looking for mastery that I did not have. And that was a really helpful tidbit of feedback. They were looking for mastery over these concepts and someone who can work at a specific pace. And I thought, I wanna be that person. And I appreciate that feedback. Always ask your interviewers for feedback. I'm gonna get into some of the best feedback I received and I have it taped up on my wall behind me. Alongside the startup that I was interviewing for, I made it to a, I guess, final coding round with one of them. They ghosted me, totally get why I was not very good in that interview. I was also interviewing with Cloudflare. I can't say much because of legal things. Cloudflare's power day was five interviews in a row. I scheduled five interviews back to back on a Friday and I still got rejected. I didn't get feedback, which really upsets me. I think it was the coding and the system design. I think the system design just wasn't up to par, but it also could have been the behavioral. But this Cloudflare interview was like, you know what? I, I kind of want to work for a company that does interesting work. So th there's like these two avenues. I feel like I could go work for a job, collect a check and do my own stuff or go work for something that I'll really care about. One of the things that I found in my last ad tech job was that it was really taking a toll on me toward the end because I don't want to wake up and make more money for someone selling their 17th Bejeweled game. There was a lot of cool technical challenges, so I wouldn't have minded going back into that place, that kind of environment, but you gotta make sure you have something to balance it out. So Cloudflare showed me that I really wanted to get into these places that were interesting. As I applied more and I, I failed a couple code screens, stats, again, I'll go into, I guess in, the, in a later video, but it showed me that I needed more practice. And I was getting this practice by going through and actually doing these interviews. Speed up to ByteDance slash TikTok. So the three things that I want to have in my next job is meaningful impact, technical challenges and good people to work with. TikTok was one of those things that was definitely gonna cover those last two. Anyway, that aside, I, I, I bombed the coding interview. The initial coding screen, they, they canceled the system design interview that I had coming up after that. And it was for a good reason, I think. Pretty much, uh, I was forgetting basic math. The nerves were getting to me, even though I've done that dozens of times. I remember going in and thinking, oh, this is an easy problem. I don't need any like algorithms or whatever. And because I had been really focused on memorizing leak code solutions, I just, the basic stuff went out the window. So you take this failure and you take the Cloudflare interviews that bombed and you decide that, okay, you you need a practical way to study algorithms and to also program. My, my mind of, if a company gives me a leak code hard, I don't wanna work for them. And I think that's still somewhat true now. However, I still deemed it important. I interviewed at Replit and I made it to the end and I had a really good process. It was a lengthy one. They had like this power day at the end. I got this really good feedback in an email from one of the engineers I spoke with. Pretty much it showed me that I need to finesse my problem solving and I need to get better at the initial solutions I come up with. And there's only one good way to do that. Practice, exposure, experience, whatever you want to call it. And so this completely changed my perspective on algorithmic coding. So coming back into our next resource, I'm not affiliated with this at all, is algoexpert.io. They had a flash sale, which I'm sure they do a lot as a business strategy. And I got the year and I got algo expert. Um, and we can see I've done not that many questions. I finished all the easy ones and I'm like a bit through the medium ones. I slowed down to work on other stuff as the, I guess, final stages and offers were in, but I am going to keep doing this. I think it's good to practice and really strengthen your applicable use of algorithms. Coming back to this 
notion of practicing, it's very obvious that Minhite BST needs a binary search tree. But it's not so obvious what two colorable might need. And I think jumping into these without having an idea of what category they're in for data structures is really important because it's more important for me to have learned what the problem is and what data structures I can think of to help that and also how to represent the data. I'm a very visually minded person. Not that I'm a visual learner. I know all that stuff's debated. The point is I can close my eyes and I just think about and see things moving around. And that doesn't always help with data, especially when you need to represent things as 2D matrices. So doing algorithms from this perspective of gaining a stronger sense of data structures, gaining a stronger sense of when to use what kind of data structure was very important to me. And it really helped. And so one of the other things that a replit showed me was to just make things. So the finite vault devlog and the infinite game devlogs are, were born out of this. I go over the system design diagrams in that infinite game devlog to practice system design in a practical way that meant something to me. In Finite Vault, it was practicing deploying. I think when you're unemployed, it can be a full-time job to apply for jobs. And in my opinion, a part of that job has to be practicing on your own thing. Generate an ID with ChatGPT and then don't use AI to code, by the way, just, just don't. The simple thing, just don't. I just don't use it after you get there, but you're not there yet. This is my GitHub repository and obviously not public, but I think this experience and doing contributions, I mean, you see in September and October, I was lacking and I was really slipping June and July too. I was doing all this, not that, not that much even, but leak code and, and just kind of relaxing and thinking it was going to be an easy ride because I had experience now. Absolutely wasn't. And again, that's because I was no longer shooting for these junior positions where I was very applicable, but I was shooting for mid-level positions where I had not risen enough yet. And so I started doing the infinite game work, the finite vault work, and it was good. I was doing this algorithmic coding stuff. And then I had an interview with an ad tech job. And this was a job where I'd show up, do good work, provide stockholder value, collect the check and move on. And I bombed the coding interview. I, I, maybe not bomb. I walked in with the question and I came up with something about backtracking and graphs. After the interview was over, I took 20 more minutes and I solved the problem just on my own. The nerves really got to me then, I think. I was a little distracted. That was just something Again, you just gotta learn. The leak code was, it was like a medium-ish leak code and it was one of those things where, okay, you know what? I'm not bummed about this. If this happens at a company that I do care about, then we got a problem. That was another algorithmic coding failure. It is what it is. So then system design. Now, Algo Expert has a system design thing. I went through and I just watched all their videos over the course of maybe two weeks, I think. And then I've been doing some of the questions. Yeah, I didn't quite pass the quiz the first time. A lot of good conceptual overview. I have the Alex Yu system design book. If you know what I'm talking about, here's some images if you want it. And that's a good conceptual overview. And that those books plus Algo Expert system design stuff, I think provided a good foundation. It gives you something to draw from. But if you don't practice it, you don't get the idea of like what to think about and when to think about it. And I crushed the system design interview for the startup that I got an offer from. And this is why. It was all of these failures and practical mishaps that I went through in order to get to this. One of the things that really helped someone who I used to work with, good friend, he called out Hello Interview. Not affiliated with this website, but I would recommend it. I've, I haven't paid for it. They have good overview videos. They have a very good framework that I really like. And this is the exact framework I used for Infinite Game. So <laughs> this is my video script, but these are my in, like, Infinite Game kind of wireframes. And I, I based it off of their structure where you come up with these functional requirements, non-functional requirements, you come up with any API routes or data flow, depending on what needs to happen. And you kind of come up with a diagram. This is this is where I diverged because this is like, okay, this is what I want going forward when making something. Throughout all my failures as well, I learned a lot about REST protocol. I know a lot more status codes than I used to and I understand things a lot more. This delivery framework, I highly recommend just reading and going through. For these videos, what I would do is, I think at, by Uber, I would, no, it was the Dropbox one where I'd, look at the question. I'd come up with my own questions to ask, kind of based on what um, Algo Expert would do. I don't want to show the questions. I don't know how much of it's behind paywall, but they give you like these hints and they tell you what questions. It's really important in a system design interview from what I've learned to ask the good questions. You have to kind of train and practice to find out what kinds of questions are more relevant for what kind of product. And I think the more I've practiced, the more I've realized that, oh, you know, this thing might involve a message queue later, but before I use it as a solution, let me ask a question to make sure that's important. And so what I would do is spend 10, 15 minutes, write out my own questions, try to answer them. You know, if it's Dropbox, I'd be like, okay, well, you know, you just need to upload a file, whatever. And then I'd come back and compare with Hello Interviews 
requirements. And I would see this and, okay, cool. Got uploaded, got downloaded. I did not ask a question nor answer it. That would say we need to worry about file sharing. So that's something to note. And then I would go through, time box myself for 30 minutes while also talking this, you know, YouTube has helped me learn to, to talk while I do things while talking, go through and design your system, right? Design the, the answer to the question for Dropbox. And then I'd go back and I'd watch the whole hello interview, mentally know what I got wrong and what I should have included, move on. No paper notes while I watch, just tried to stay focused. And again, it's this practice that like, it doesn't take that much work. It takes work. You got, you got to practice. And it, I now know how message queues work better than I used to. And then I had an interview with Again, can't say much because legal contracts, but they had a system design interview. I'm a little frustrated about it. In this framework, you hopefully you can get through all the API routes. Hopefully you can, you know, draw up your own design, but I kept getting interrupted. And so in this framework, and I agree with this still, my goal was to get the system working from A to B for one, five requests. And I did, but then they started asking me questions about how to do this thing. What are other ways I could do? And so in my head, I'm like this, this, this for this one request. And then they eventually kind of gave me the answer. And I was like, I, but in my head, I was like, I'm not there yet. I'm not looking at the million requests. That failure, again, you gotta ask yourself, what can I learn from this? Make sure you and your interviewer have the same context. And that, you know, that was it. I, algorithmic coding, I, that went super well. I spent some time reading through the problem and I, I at first I went, oh, this is so dumb. Like I know the legal problem this is. And then it ended up being something a little easier. Was able to refactor my code. I think that interview went incredibly well. I still have a third and I'm waiting to hear back. Until I sign something, I'm not stopping. We'll put it that way. Always ask for feedback. You know, see what the interviewers are thinking. As someone who did interviews, I didn't mind feedback. The most grateful thing, this Repli email was the recruiter from another e-commerce company where I kind of failed this pragmatism exercise. And he was like, yeah, we gave you a thumbs up, but you just weren't high enough on the ranking of all the people we gave thumbs up for, you know, because of these few reasons. And I was like, you know what? That makes total sense. I was also kind of nervous during that day and it is what it is, but that feedback was super helpful in a way. It gave me confidence to keep moving. And to those recruiters and employers that have given me that feedback, I'm just super thankful. That has been one of the biggest things for me. All of these failures, right, are at these companies. Some of them I cared about. Some of them were really cool opportunities. Some of them were like, cool, I'm gonna shoot my shot and see how far I get, right? And then eventually, and these are stats I'll go into next video, but again, avoiding company names, we have a Fang company and we have this really cool startup. Both very competitive opportunities for how I see them. One verbal offer from Fang, and I have a kind of emailed terms from the startup. I wanna talk about why these were successful for a second, for both what I learned and some mentality switches. But first this is a hydration check. So there have been four instances in which Infinite Game or Finite Vault was directly useful. But just by building an app from zero to one from the ground up, I was able to do very well in some interviews, especially, you know, Golang. I interviewed for a Golang position and I knew how to use the response writer object and stuff because of this thing I had done, because of this experience I had given myself. There was a mentality I had fostered that if no one else is gonna hire me, I am going to hire myself. Obviously I can't pay myself, but sitting around and just applying is not enough which I, I thought it was. I thought I had experience now and therefore it should be enough. You know, maybe this is obvious to some people. Leak code grind is not enough. I did algo expert because I like how they structure it and I just, I don't like the, the leak code mentality. There's something about leak code elitism and you know, the secret handshake that you get at fang companies where leak code is end all be all. The first interview was pseudocode. I'm not gonna say anything more obviously, but, but it was a back-to-back -back discussion as I was just typing. That kind of, lifted a lot of anxiety and turns out I did well on that. By making this infinite game and doing these algorithmic problems, yes, it was annoying. No, the algo coding didn't come up. The technical screen I had later was not algorithms related. It was very much more practical, but having done algorithms gave me confidence. One of the things that I had ignored for so long was banging your head against the wall on algorithmic coding problems. You gotta do it. You gotta figure out how you think. You gotta really push yourself until you're gonna lose it and then get the next step. Don't look up solutions. Look them up after you get your own working solution and learn from it. And that comparison is really important because you've got to learn how you think. An infinite game is like, man, this is more fun because it's my project and I get to design the system, but I also get to figure out what kinds of things I think about. Modifying API endpoints when you make a design, whatever it might be. Another mentality that I fostered was you're not there yet. I think at the start, I suffered a lot from, I'm in the final panel. I've done really well in these in the past, blah, blah, blah. Nothing trumps experience pretty much. Building something was my answer to that. And you got to push yourself at the same time with building that thing. Even now, between these two decisions and some issues with paperwork and timing, you're not there yet. I'm still going. I back out of some because I'm confident that one of these is going to work out. If I stop and something just shit hits the fan, I'm screwed. That was kind of my journey. I was at this very basic level of thinking experience was going to get me. And then I went up and then went down and I started this linear climb, slow growth up. One of the things as well was getting myself to sit down at 9am every morning. It's really motivating when you don't have a job and <laughs> <laughs> you need a job. I'm a pretty frugal person, but at the same time I was a software engineer. So having a nice 
buffer of savings was super helpful. And it's not something that's available to everyone. Even with Replit, how do you expect someone who's maybe already got a full-time job to take a whole day off for an uncompensated interview? For Cloudflare to take a Friday off and you know, if they have a family and they're working remote or whatever, to just back to back do those five interviews. Part of that availability for Cloudflare was on me, but I think the point stands. Tech is just, there's this absurd level of interviews you have to do. I gave up trying to fight it and I, just wanted to utilize the system, get good at the coding questions, get good at the algorithms, get good at the system design, whatever's gonna come my way. So I have not accepted anything yet. At the end of the day, I feel more valuable than I did six months ago. I feel smarter than I did six months ago. I don't really believe in talent. You work hard to get yourself out of the level you're in as hard as you can. I know everyone's circumstances are different. When you've got a buffer of savings and are unemployed, it's a little easier. That's a privilege I'm fully aware of. I'm gonna talk more about my stats, how many interviews that I really do and whatever, but so no shade against any of these processes. It was just kind of like the whole system is a little annoying. It's hard to find a job out there, but it's not impossible. Over 350 applications on my spreadsheet, at least several rejections and finally two, two offers. One situation that did happen, I was talking with a contracting company for, we'll say company A, and I really wanted to work for company A. I thought it was a really cool company. And the contract was six months and I was thinking, I take the contract at whatever they give me, and then I go work for company A afterward. Contracting is a great way to pay someone to be interviewed. But then the contracting company came back with some really bad terms that I didn't accept. And it was kind of like, well, I need a job, but I don't like these terms. And I think knowing when to reject a bad opportunity to pursue the good is important. It was a risky move, admittedly, because I could be in the same position I was. If something feels wrong, go with your gut and don't do it. Holding out for better is good, but don't hold out for the best. The best does not exist. But at the end of the day, you gotta work hard to make up for the faults of a system that isn't really working for you. That was my adventure, sprucing up the resume, discovering that my experience was not enough for what I wanted to be doing. And I was too over-leveled for junior roles and way under-leveled for senior roles. There's mid-level roles that are just so ambiguous. Let me know if you have questions, drop a comment with what you might wanna see in a stats video, cause I'm still putting it together. What do I include in things that that's not just the spreadsheet, right? What kind of things, were helpful for you in terms of finding a job in this market, if that's applicable to you. Three years ago, being a software engineer was enough, but now you really gotta be a cut above the rest and it's very much up to you to make that happen. Take agency of your life. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you in the next one.